Hey everyone, it's Arcanus Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to another video. We're going to be reacting to another Project Ascension video. It looks like they just released the trailer for their Burning Crusade uh, expansion coming up soon. And uh, it's going to give us a bunch of new details of the features coming up, as well as the dates. I'm pretty excited. Um, we've been waiting for this for a while, and I'm sure it's going to be good. But before we do get into it, uh, I'm going to play the video. I'll try my best not to pause it. I uh, probably will talk over it a little bit, but um, I do want you guys to check out the actual trailer before watching this. Give them the credit and the view they deserve. Uh, so before you do play this, go ahead and give the trailer the actual view for me uh, because they work so hard for it and they deserve it. So go ahead and do that and then you can come over here and watch me react to it. But other than that, again, after the video is done, we're gonna hopefully try to break it down and see what I like the most and take a look at the different features separately and pause it and have a chance to talk about it. But we're gonna play through it. Let's go ahead and do it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I, that was my farm spot. That's me ganking human alliance scum. Whoever make these trailers, man, hats off to you. You're, you're fucking sick. <laughs> hey there, heroes. Long time no see. Welcome Hi. to the Ascension official update. Today, we're bringing you up to speed on everything that's been happening with Ascension. <clears throat> what's been worked on, what's happening right now, and what's coming just down the road. I'm your host, Zen, and today we're announcing something you've all been excited for. Mm. The Burning Crusade is almost here. Yes. The Burning Crusade is on the horizon, heroes. With the release date set for August of this year, it's time to lay the groundwork for the path you'll walk towards Ascension's got first that. expansion. There are some big changes to tackle, but as TBC approaches, I one can't read this feature rises far. above the rest. Classless returns to the forefront of Ascension. The classless free pick system is adjusting, upgrading, and improving as it prepares for TBC. And when the Dark <clears> Portal <throat> finally opens, you'll step into a world of incredible possibility. Hundreds upon hundreds of new game-changing mystic enchantments Ooh, have appeared. We've seen all, some of them already. Pretty sick. Cost overhaul, talent adjustments, and the primary stat system are here to ensure that your choices matter. The new hero architect makes saving and sharing builds easier than ever before, and our character advancement UI has gotten a fresh coat of paint as well. Looks good. Finally, we'll finish up by covering raiding in TBC with brand new flex and heroic raid modes. It's time to truly create your ultimate champion heroes. That's where These this alliance changes scum. are exploding with potential. Where the horde at? Whatever spec you can imagine, whatever archetype you can think of, will be free for you to troll. forge. Once you've made your unstoppable hero, you can test yourself against the dangers of a world unexplored as you prepare to adventure in Outland. Before that, however, you'll get a chance to test the TBC pre-patch changes firsthand. Consider this the official announcement. Ascension is launching its first league. Leagues what? are a new type of short-term format realm. They'll typically last from a few weeks to a few Going months. Poe we'll on us. And a bit chaotic Sick. by nature, and are a place where tuning and changes will happen in real time. They'll also provide a space wow, to experiment with more wild, quirky, and far-out features ideas that wouldn't quite work as well in a full season, but might be really fun to play for a few weeks. Ascension's first league will be the TBC Pre-Patch League. This one will last for exactly one month, with absolutely no exception, before merging into Legacy Realms and bringing characters and okay. updates with it. While it's live, the TBC Pre-Patch League will be a place where you can test and experiment with all the new features coming this August in the Burning Crusade. Okay. Updates and tuning will occur in real time, and changes will be attentive, fast, and based on player feedback, observations. So and the league one is like beta. <laughs> These rapid improvements Open beta. Will make the format a bit crazy. I like it. And that, alongside the massively increased character progression and whirlwind release schedule, will make for an incredible month. The point of it all is to test these new updates from start to finish in rapid succession. That way, whatever features need a bit of extra love can be improved before huh. they hit the main realms. Smart. In so doing, the focus moving forward can be on providing more epic TBC content and expanding TBC systems once the expansion goes live. Expect the TBC Pre-Patch League to be a wild month, heroes. Whether you're a new or returning player or a long-term veteran, now is a great time to build a new hero and catch up with the pack. 
preparing yourself for the burning crusade okay. yeah so it's While like beta new features i'm, I'm down fields, raid i'm down MVP, you'll be preparing your champion to step foot through the dark portal that's how i'm Here's understanding some other juicy it info you can expect from the league first off your collection <clears throat> that cheap shot sound that haunts my nightmares so you'll have everything you need to outfit your new heroes second character progression is getting a massive boost Leveling rates are increased to time seven. Raiders' commendation drops are significantly increased, and raid loot is doubled. Additionally, lockout timers may be reduced to as little as three days if appropriate. Oh wow! Honor gain is increased by times three, and arena point gain will also be increased to fit. They should just make this normal. Overall, to be honest, you can expect an amazing <laughs> leveling experience, followed by a fast-paced end game with new content dropping fast and frequently. As you conquer content and experience the updates, they'll be ported from the League straight over to Legacy Realms, as both the team and the community are happy with them. Hmm. That's the basis for our pre-patched League heroes. Let's I like it. Into specific I'm digging it. As mentioned earlier, the pre-patched League and TVC are a return to classless ascension. The free pick model will be in full swing, and you can get excited about choosing your favorite spells and building your hero okay. like never before. All three before. are back. To that end, a handful of Iron big Man changes are here for the classless system that will help eliminate the problems it's faced in the past. First up, one of the coolest updates we've got. Let's check out the new Mystic Enchantments. Ascension's first league is bringing you unprecedented potential for customization with Let's the help of hundreds upon hundreds of new mystic enchantments. Yeah, we've seen we've seen some of the new ones. Over 1, They're really good. Mystic enchantments on Ascension, and using a combination of old and new, you'll be able to create any sort of champion you could possibly imagine. When you step into the TBC pre-patch league, you'll get a chance to try them yourself, building whatever you can think of and conquering your enemies like never before. One of Ascension's major goals with these Mystic Enchantments... Can't help by smiling, man. I'm so excited. ...a variety of competitive builds and playstyles. And not just competitive in a PvP sense. Good. Competitive in the sense of feeling great. This is what we want. ...as well as having the numbers to keep pace. Hopefully Basically, they'll be able to pull it off. You should be able to make the build you want on Ascension. Want to play a Flameborn Archer? You can do that. Want to play a Brooding Night Elf Warden? You can do that, too. Want to spring from the shadows, striking down your prey in a mm. flurry of steel before vanishing nope. into the sunset? Where's the warrior the shit? Come on. Jazz? You can do that. No, really. For real? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be okay. I might do that. That sounds fucking hype. <laughs> that was good. These new enchantments will change the way you craft and play your hero, offering you incredible potential for both customization and unique play. With some innovation and a bit of careful planning, you should be able to realize any character, any hero that you could possibly hmm? want to play. This is it going to be meta, These though? These aren't uninspired power-ups, either. These are transformative enchantments that shape your hero and help solidify your playstyle. <clears throat> They're also moving away from being rehashes of talent points, instead becoming unique, interesting, and fun to use in their own right. Finally, the rarity of mystic enchantments now better represent what they do and what they're for. Uncommon and rare mystic enchantments stack three times. They offer you power where you want it and are crucial for completing your build. A big change, however, is that the new Basically, uncommon REs are no longer it sounds like more like of rare some of this is for the newer players. New from scratch effects that are unique to uncommon mystic enchantments. Now, when you find one out in the world, it won't be garbage just because you have the potential of getting a better rare or epic version of the enchantment later on down the line. What you find will be a unique, interesting effect hmm. all on its own that you can decide whether or not to use if it seems to fit with your build. Epic Mystic Enchantments are now single stack, unique, powerful effects. Much like legendaries, you can have only one of each. However, you can have up to three epic Aries total, okay. meaning they'll help you define Was that the same? and flesh out whatever build you're trying to create by offering power and utility in the right places. There's some cool ones, guys. Finally, if you checked out the alpha, there's some really cool ones. Too much. They still exist as cornerstones of your build mm -hmm. and still grant substantial power in the places that you think you need it most. The big change is that a ton of new legendary enchantments have been introduced to open up. Hopefully, they're going to keep adding more mentions of gameplay. These new mystic enchantments serve a few important purposes. First, they'll shift enchantments away from just being additional talents and start adding real flavor and flair to your hero. This in turn will help you define yourself apart from others. Additionally, the sheer number of new REs should help to widen build variety. With mm -hmm. so many enchantments and combinations, the choices you make really start to matter. 
and heroes will find that they're better able to establish their personal identity and specs apart from their peers, even if you happen to be playing the same general build. Then, okay. from a balance perspective, that's always the goal, right? Talent copying REs and introducing new, unique effects makes for less redundancy, less power up one skill to win, and lends itself to better balance potential across the board. If a build created by these new enchantments reveals itself as either too strong or too weak, adjustments can start on the mystic enchantment level rather than the spells and talents. The enchantments will provide a focal point for improving okay. the realm, and that's a win for everyone. Hmm? It goes without saying, but spells season, and abilities season on the one? have tons of different effects. Not season Some one. Strong League one is just going to be straight balance. By nature, Go crazy, guys. We're going to fix whatever's strong, what's crazy. Down. The point is that certain spells and abilities are stronger than others, and that's good. Strong spells feel great to use. They help define your character and your playstyle, and add both flavor and power to your spell selection. Trying to make all spells similar in power would erase that. So to fix it, we're introducing dynamic ability costs. Dynamic ability costs are here hmm. to solve a simple problem. Different spells are worth different amounts, plain and simple. Okay. With dynamic ability costs, the cost of an ability will now reflect its power rather than being universal across the board. Moving forward, stronger okay. abilities will cost more ability essences to denote their colossal. Oh, okay. This accomplishes two. I'm thinking like rage and mana and shit. You won't be fighting Not who's picked essence. all the utility in the universe to reset and prolong. Okay, fights, that makes sense. One cooldown after another and negating every trick up your sleeve. Two strong spells and abilities can stop undergoing nerf after nerf to try and jerry rig them in line power wise with less strong skills. Strong skills will be allowed to be strong and they can have a cost that represents their strength at a glance. When you look at a spell As it with should an be. above average investment <clears throat> cost, you can tell not only that it's good, but also that it's a hero-defining ability, one you can feel great about choosing. Spells like Blink and Divine Shield are game changers, and as one of your few utility spells, they should feel great to use. If you pop a spell <laughs> yeah. cooldown and either win or escape from a fight, the ability you used should feel like it was worth the investment you traded to get it. Big the true. dynamic ability cost change will make that happen, and a spell's cost will now reflect its power. Big the choices you make and the abilities you choose will define you as an individual as you adventure and roam throughout Azeroth. Next up, a brand new streamlined stat pick system that actually brings meaningful customization to your hero is finally here. Introducing the primary more. stat system. The primary stat system allows players, rather than individually assigning stats, to choose their primary They're roasting stat their own system. click of a button. Once chosen, you'll gain bonuses based on which stat you picked. I like this. Selective I like this change. Agility will grant you bonus attack power. Intelligence grants extra spell damage, and Spirit grants extra healing power. It's a mm. really straightforward system, and it means yeah, a lot. Yeah, I like it. Hero. Instead of Choosing your primary picking a each point into strength, to your hero, Spirit, as well as whatever, specs and just and giving one more pick layer strength, of all into strength. To your creativity. Have you ever wanted to try out a new build, quick and easy? Is your friend playing something you wouldn't mind giving a shot? Have an archetype in mind and want to give it a whirl? Now you can load builds instantly to your hero with the, the system's great as well. Hero Architect. The Hero Architect is an amazing new addition that allows heroes to save, share, and load different TG builds straight monkey. from the Architect <laughs> UI to your character. It's going to be like 90% of the server. You to create or load fully mapped out builds showing what spells, talents, and enchantments to pick down to the individual level. I if really like this. From the hero it's really good. You'll know exactly what spells and talents to pick as you level, creating an environment where you can learn the build as you go and forgo the hurdles and challenges that come from making a really great build from scratch. By the time you hit level cap, you'll know your hero inside and out and be ready to grab some epic mystic enchantments and pieces of gear. On the other end of the spectrum, for those of you who love theory crafting and creating builds, the hero architect allows you to share your build. Really, this is this is one of the best things in the game. Now veterans and in my opinion, in their thinking chairs can because this is what it's all about and fame for their theory crafting expertise. Exactly. Make a good build, and dozens, if not hundreds, of players might decide to play it. What's more, players will be able to upvote and downvote builds. Oh, meaning god, both the cream <laughs> and the meme will always rise to the top. Oh, not Jesus. only will this allow players to try and test different builds, but it will also provide savvy heroes with a way to see what spells and talents are commonly picked oh, across god. really great builds. Upvote all my builds, guys. Get me to the top. Make some of their own. Finally, the top build traders will get accolades for their performance, so it's mm. worth it to make and share good builds. Ooh. Think your specialization can rise to the top? That's cool. The people will have to decide. Ah, uh, but Next I'm gonna make a thousand accounts and upvote all my fucking 
great. All my builds. For some of you, there's no better challenge than storming through and conquering the powerful enemies you'll find in the depths of raids. True. On Ascension, raids should be both accessible for anyone who wants to run them, as well as challenging for those who enjoy the struggle. That's okay. why with Ascension's first league, both flex difficulty and heroic difficulty are coming mm. to Ascension. Sweet. Flex rating is a new addition to Ascension that will open up raids to more players. Gone are Good. the days where you'll need exact numbers PVs, to like, and overcome raids. With PV was struggling. Like, I struggled so much with PV before. Hopefully this helps it. Players, and the raid will adjust depending on your size. Missing one player from your 25-man raid? That's rating? good. No problem. Delve inside and the raid will adjust to your 24-man size. Have a group of 13 friends? Wow, man. I'm impressed. Out. Great news. Take your 12 buddies and run it together as 13. <clears throat> really Flex impressed. gives you and your guild and you and your friends the flexibility to raid the way you want. No more calling it quits just because one hero can't show or has to leave early. With flex rating, you'll be able to dive into this raids is big. This is a big one. of how many allies happen to show up today. As I like this. As long as it's at least 10. You do need at least 10. That's how flex rating works. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you looking for a challenge, however, I like that. worry not. We've got a few tricks up our sleeve for the bold and the brave. Introducing heroic raids. <gasps> heroic raids are exactly what they sound like. Challenging trials balanced to the tune of kicking your ass. With the implementation like of flex rating, all Ascension raids will additionally feature both a 10 and 25 man heroic <clears throat> version. These raids offer a much harder challenge for guilds who seek it, and also heroic versions of that raid's gear. Think you look okay, nice I'll save my questions for later. Asinov? Hopefully I remember. How about heroic twin glaives? Think you can hold like how they, loot in your pit lord's <laughs> They don't have the actual stats for it. With your heroic Ooh, 200, imagine? <laughs> yeah. But still, heroic loot's pretty cool. <laughs> Additionally, heroic raid loot will allow those who really enjoy undertaking difficult raids to stand out from the crowd. Bloodforged gear won't cut it when it comes to heroics, so you'll need to climb a ladder if you want to see the treasure cool. hiding in these challenging trials. Hey, how you doing? And that, heroes, is everything we've got for today. Good. We hope you're really excited to dive into our very July 17th, boys. Experience the TBC pre patch. Remember that after it launches, the realm will only stick around for one month. So take the time to test out new builds and solidify your character for the challenges of the Burning Crusade. If you're a new player or returning to Ascension, now is a great <laughs> time to jump in and prepare oh, shit, there to I am. step through the Dark Portal this August. Thanks so much for tuning in, and be sure to like there I am, right there. for more Ascension updates. Front and center! <laughs> if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. We'll be choosing the best ones to answer in our upcoming Q&A. With that wrapped up, heroes, thanks once again for watching. Take it easy. Good job, Project Ascension team. Bells like blink and divine Whoever makes these videos, by the way, is awesome. I forgot what they said his name is, but um, uh, good. I like it. I mean, this tells us, I'm sure most of this was for newer players or hasn't seen the alpha yet. Um, I already knew about some of this stuff, and I could tell you guys it's, it's really exciting. But I do have some, I'm going to like just bring it down here real quick. Um, <clears throat> just in regards to like heroic raids, I was wondering like, so let's say like what happens to open world PV, not open world PVP. Like if you're farming the open world and farming for loot, you know, your item level depends on what drops. Um, I wonder how, how high your item level has to be in order to get heroic versions, heroic ver versions of the gear rather than normal. And how, how would that work? Like... How would get like let's say you kill something okay you just got the normal version of that loot how is it going to go above to the heroic maybe i guess just higher item level um but we'll see how that fleshes out but that's really cool i'm excited uh, hopefully this really brings pve back into it um i'm not sure if they're going to like make the lesser raid like the older raids a little bit more or like relevant um or they're just going to move past it and go to burning crusade i really can't wait to raid karazhan for sure um let's see flex rating I'm, I'm really glad they brought this in because i mean that was one of the problems with pve people will just not have the time they leave after one wipe um so hopefully i mean i might even make a guild now and just flex raid bring 10 people or multiple 10 man groups and women groups into the um into the raid so we can get some cool loot uh let's see it didn't really touch too much about pvp um, but I'm totally fine with that. It looks like the, the league feature is really good. 
Uh, of course, taking stuff like that from PoE, um, that's going to keep every few months fresh until... I mean, I don't know if they're going to be tossing out seasons and just go with leagues. I think that's a great idea. Um, so one to three months, new league, something different happens. But the league, first league, of course, it makes the most sense. I'm, I'm fine with what's happening. They're letting everyone test everything uh, before the actual expansion comes out, like making sure things aren't too overpowered, make sure people are getting hands-on. That's that's actually big brain as fuck. Um, so I'm really excited to see that. Uh, league specifics. I wonder I wonder what they're going to be bringing to leagues, man. That's, that's, a, that's such a cool idea. Hopefully they have some uh, really cool really cool ideas in mind. Uh, but the Mystic Enchant stuff, we've seen some of them already when I live stream the Alpha. Uh, they have some really good ideas in there. And uh, hopefully they keep them coming. I'm not sure if they're done with the uh, Mystic Enchant or they're going to keep bringing some throughout the, the different leagues or just throughout the, the leagues in general or just game time. Or just throughout the months. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. But uh, hopefully they keep adding new ones in. Um, I'm sure they'll do that league by league, but whatever. Um, Mystic and Chance, yeah, the, those are really good Dyma dynamic ability costs. I thought that I thought they were talking about like, oh, your moral strike is gonna cost cost a shit ton more rage, but they're talking about the actual ability essence. Like instead of like like a moral strike um, is gonna cost five, and hamstring is gonna cost two because it's it's two different things. Moral strike is of course stronger than hamstring, so it's not gonna cost as much. Um, that makes total sense. Primary stat system, really good. Instead of picking all your points, like strength, stamina, and whatever, you just pick strength, and then it fully loads it into strength is what I was um, I was noticing. So you don't have to like keep clicking each point into them. Hero Architect, again, one of the best systems in the game so far uh, because a class of system like this, to me, is about coming up with those different kinds of builds, testing them out and sharing them so other people can try them out and, pro and just try to find what they want to play the most. If it, if it is, is the build going to be good? Who knows? I'm sure there's going to be a meta at the end of the day. There always is. But hopefully the more players come into um, these new servers, the more it's going to be more relaxing and have them try whatever they want, not try too hard to get the meta stuff. But there's always going to be a meta, but hopefully people are going to have fun with this one. Um, yeah, flex rating, really excited. Um, really excited for the new season. If you guys want to ask me any more questions or ask me questions in the comments below, please feel free to. I'll try to ask or try to answer them. And of course, join our Discord as well. Uh, we always have always have some fun people in there ready to help and other things. But um, I'm excited, guys. I, I really am. They did such a good job. Shout out to the Project Ascension team. Shout out to the guy making these trailers. This guy's a beast. But other than that, I can't wait. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.